Hello everybody, thanks for watching. I am finally upgrading this milling machine here from the old uh, cheap controller that it's got in it. It's got a Sane Smart 4-axis controller, I think it's like 50 bucks. Um, it never worked very well. The first time I tried to integrate it with the spindle, the VFD, um, it basically fried that a pin on the controller and I haven't been able to use it to control the spindle on and off since. Um, and there's been other issues with it. One of the things I don't like is if I just tap the button, it moves a lot longer than I hold the button. And it seems to be just timing and everything with the controller has never been very good. Um, it's an issue I've, I've never appreciated because when you're inching on up to something, you don't want to crash. It can be a cumber problem. So I love Mach 3, I've used it, I'm familiar with it. Um, I'm no pro at it by any means, but it, it's what I've always used on a milling machine. And what I've always used on a lathe was the Centroid software. So the reason why I bought this, mil this controller for this mill was because it was cheap and I could see if I could get this old mill working. Um, and that was a project in and of itself, I got this machine machine practically for free um, but it was not in working condition the previous owner had basically used the VFD as a phase converter because he didn't have three phase power to power up the machine in that process it fried all of the electronics on the machine um, it just it's not it had a, a slow ramp up to 60 Hertz so it none of the electronics liked it everything went up in smoke and it was just basically a, a mill that didn't work. Um, so I pulled off the big, huge old motors that it had. They were big servos, um, put in stepper motors that actually came off of my old mill, which was just a little bench top mill. So eventually I do need to upgrade these stepper motors, um, go with something a little bit bigger than a NEMA 34. So, but enough rambling on about it. I got to get everything converted out and then integrated in with this acorn cnc controller which this is the basic package um, it came with this board itself it didn't come with the holder i went to uh, thingiverse.com and i typed in acorn cnc and it gave me three options for some enclosures to use for this thing so i printed out on the 3d printer one that i liked for using on this machine um, it came with the networking cable, came with the 24 volt power supply that also has a 5 volt line on it, and it came with a relay controller board, which is pretty cool because there's a bunch of stuff on this machine that I didn't have interface to begin with. It's got an automatic oiler, uh, it's got automatic coolant, and it's got automatic, uh, although that probably won't get interface, but automatic tool changing. So. For right now, I gotta basically start by taking out the old controller, um, and I'm gonna be cutting, removing all the wiring that went to it as well. Um, this controller is a lot bigger, and there's just no way to make it fit the way it's con currently configured. So I'm gonna be starting from scratch as far as where to put the controller, where to mount the power supplies, the motor drivers, all of that. So uh, before I get to ripping it down, and while it's still a, a working machine, uh, might as well give you a little tour. So obviously the got X and Y hooked up. Um, spindle goes up and down. And if I put it all the way up here, uh, one really nice feature is the automatic tool changer. So hit tool out. Oop, not quite up high enough. So you can drop the tool and then you just put whatever tool that you need to change out to in there and you're set. And that's all thanks to what's going on up there, which I have a video of, I will put in right here. So what I have here is just basically, um, looks like an old impact gun with the handle cut off and that's wired where the trigger would go and goes back into the control or it goes into this box here. And then it's got an air hose on it too. 
Um, and basically when I hit the tool change button, this little thing just drops down, the impact gun spins off the drawbar, and you hit the other button and it does the same thing only backwards, drops down, spins on the drawbar. So neat little system, but it's, uh, yeah, it, it came like this. I did not do that. that All right, so basically to be able to turn the thing on and off, um, I've got this hooked up and there it goes, spins up. If I need to reverse it, I use this switch, reverse it. Um, when I get to wiring up that controller to the VFD, hopefully I'll be able to use it to control direction, speed, all that. Um, but this is a, a, gear a gear head on it. So instead of having to change the belts on the top to change speeds, I can just crank this dial on. Um, probably shouldn't do that while it's not moving. So. That's almost full tilt, although it will go faster. And that, that's all in high range. Um, I did have it set up so that it will shut off with the reset there. That will go over there. This is actually off of the original control panel, which I don't have the face on there because I've put in the computer, which is not going to work anymore. It's too old. That's one of the things that I learned researching everything for this kit is. All right, so with all that being said, there's basically a lot of information that you need to, to get before you get started on this project. Um, there's going to be things that it requires like a, a new Windows 10 computer and um, based on the type of stepper motor drivers you have, it's gonna be a lot of different ways that you're gonna connect this because it's set up to run 24 volts um, for your logic for a servo driver or modern stepper drivers, or if you go through the parallel port, it runs it at five volt logic. So depending on the way you're applying this, there's gonna be different wiring configurations for the board. I'm gonna put a link in the description to CNC, uh, centroidcnc.com and they have a lot of different wiring configurations already drawn out for you um, so that depending on how you're integrating your system they may already have it all drawn up for you so i'll put the link to that below so i wanted to keep these videos short this video is more just an introduction so you could see the mill for what it is um, before i really get started on taking everything apart now what I'm going to do is go ahead and get everything taken apart and in the next video I will be hooking up and uh, powering up to the controller and going over wiring up the configuration that I've got into this controller as far as getting the basic movements set up. So that's what to look forward to in the next episode and um, try to get it again I'm going to try to keep it to less than 10 minutes. Then I'll go into wiring up the extra stuff, the, the relay board and the oiler the coolant i'll probably do a whole episode just on getting it configured with the vfd because that is going to be a lot more complicated um, but i'm going to try to keep them short keep, and yeah i don't think you want to see pulling the the wires and all that kind of stuff out of these boxes so uh to go ahead and do that off video and get back to you as soon as i got something good going all right thanks for watching and uh if you want to keep up with the build, please hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and if you like what you see, give me the thumbs up. All right, thank you.